Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to look at the fun, suspenseful game, Elder Sign. Inspired by the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, this 1-8 to eight player game designed by Richard Lanius and Kevin Wilson and published by Fantasy Flight Games. Evil has come from beyond to the museum. Each player takes on the role of an investigator and comes face to face with one of the ancient ones. Creatures that dwell in the space between dimensions. Now let's go to the table and learn to play Elder Sign. Place the clock and museum entrance in the play area, setting the clock hand to midnight. Place the six green dice the red die and the yellow die near the museum entrance. Randomly choose one ancient one card and place it face up near the clock or players may agree on which care ancient one they wish to challenge. For our game we will be playing against Yig. Place the monster markers in an opaque container from which players can randomly draw them such as a bag or a cup we will be using this cup. These monster markers with, a, with the mask icon on them are not used when facing Yig, so we will return them to the box. Shuffle the adventure deck and deal six cards face up, face up and place them below the ancient one in two rows of three. Then Then shuffle the other world deck and place both decks face down near the rows of face up adventures. Shuffle the common item, unique item, spell, and ally card decks and place them near the adventure deck. Separate the Elder Sign, Doom, Sanity, Clue, and Stamina tokens into piles and keep them in reach of all players. I have used these glass bowls to place the tokens in to make it a little easier to keep them organized. Each player randomly draws one investigator card or each player may choose their investigator card if, they, if that is what everyone agrees to prior to starting the game. For our two player game we will be using Vincent Lee and Caroline Fern. Next each player takes his corresponding investigator marker the number of stamina and sanity tokens shown on his investigator card and any items, clues, uh, or allies shown under starting items. Then each player places his investigator marker on the entrance sheet. Determine the first player by shuffling the chosen investigator markers and randomly choosing one. The first player then shuffles the mythos deck and places it near the clock. Then he draws one mythos card and faces up, face, places it face up beside the mythos deck and resolves its immediate effects. Like the adventure cards, the mythos card shows a locked die icon. Place the appropriate die on that card. And that completes the setup. The object for all players in a game of Elder Sign is to seal away the Ancient One before it awakens. To seal away the Ancient One, players must collect Elder Signs by resolving adventures that arise in the museum. If the Ancient One awakens, players have one last chance to defeat him in a nearly hopeless final battle. Players should be warned that the battle against the Ancient One almost always ends in failure and in death. Each player is represented by one of these investigator cards right here. We see the name and occupation of the investigator. 
Vincent Lee is a doctor which may come in handy in a game with monsters trying to devour us. Right here shows Vincent's maximum sanity, the amount of sanity he begins with. An investigator's sanity cannot exceed this number. Over here is his maximum stamina, the amount of stamina he begins with. Like the sanity number, his stamina cannot exceed this number. Down here is his special ability. This is a unique ability that the player controlling this investigator can use. In this case, once per day, he can regain one stamina for himself or any other investigator. And finally, over here is his starting items. This is a list of items with which the investigator begins the game. Vincent starts with one common item and one spell, but we'll talk more about how to use these later on. This is one of the Ancient One cards. The goal of the investigators is to, see, is to work together to seal away the Ancient One. Before starting the game, you should read the text on the Ancient One you have chosen. The text explains important information about the Ancient One. On Yig, on the Yig card I have chosen, right here below his picture, it shows Yig's anger which explains conditions that trigger consequences for the investigators during the game. This area right here with the elder sign and the number 10 is the number of elder signs required to seal him away and win the game. Right here is the doom track where we place the doom tokens as we acquire them. If the doom track gets filled before we acquire the elder signs we need, then the Ancient One awakes and the investigators must engage him in a final battle and defeat him in order to still get the win for the investigator team. Some spaces on the Doom Track have a monster symbol like this one here. If, the doom t if a Doom Token is placed on one of these spaces, we must draw a monster marker from the cup and place it on an adventure card, making it more difficult to resolve. Finally, right here, on the card, it explains Yig's attack. We'll talk more about that later. Players take turns exploring the museum and resolving its adventures. The game starts with the first player and continues clockwise around the table. A player's turn consists of three phases. The movement phase, the resolution phase, and the clock phase. For the movement phase, a player moves their investigator to an adventure card, an other world card if one is in play, or the museum entrance sheet. You may also choose to remain where you are. They now proceed to the resolution phase. For the resolution phase, if a player occupies an adventure card or another world card, he attempts to resolve it by rolling dice to complete its tasks. If they occupy the museum entrance sheet, they perform one of the actions listed on the sheet. To resolve this adventure, you would have to resolve these three tasks, a player may complete an adventure's tasks in any order he wishes unless the card shows an order arrow to the left of its task like this one right here. If this arrow is present, the player must complete the task in order from top to bottom. You roll all the dice in your dice pool to attempt to resolve the first task. If you are successful, you place the die or the dice on that task to show it's complete. Show that it is done and roll the remaining dice to attempt the second task. If your die results don't complete the next task, you reduce the die pool by one and re-roll in an attempt to complete the task. After discarding one die following an unsuccessful attempt to resolve a task, you may focus the die that will help complete a task by placing it on your investigator token like this one, like this lore die face. On your next attempt, you only need lore, one lore to complete the last task on this adventure. Once all the tasks are complete, you have resolved the adventure and can claim the rewards at the bottom of the card. On this adventure, you would receive one clue token, which can be used to, for rerolls, an other world symbol like this one allows you to reveal the top card from the other world deck like this one here. Once revealed, an investigator can move there in an attempt to resolve it. An other world card 
resolves the same way as adventure cards. Hmm. Looks like one of the rewards for this one is a coveted elder sign which would help us seal away Yig. If you fail to complete the task, you must suffer the penalties shown here. In this case, your investigator would lose one sanity and this symbol indicates that you gain a doom token on Yig's doom track, moving one step closer to waking him up. The number here is the number of trophies you receive for resolving this adventure card. You keep the adventure cards that you resolve until you use the trophies to buy items or heal your investigator at the museum entrance. During the game, you may be informed by a card that a monster appears. Just draw one from the cup like this one here, the Hound of Tindalos. Monsters get placed on an adventure card over white boarded areas like this one here. The task on the monster card replaces the task on the adventure card. So in this case, the three investigation is replaced by a lore. This monster also has a locked yellow die from use plus it has a picture of a clock. Completing this task unlocks the yellow die for future use but forces you to advance the clock an additional three hours and defeats the monster allowing you to, to add two trophies to your collection. As you play the game you will acquire spells, clue tokens, and allies and items like this one here. It's called dynamite and it has a plus sign with a red die symbol. Prior to rolling your dice to complete tasks, you could use this card by returning it to the bottom of your items deck and add the red die to your dice pool. The red die is different from the green die as it replaces the one investigation and terror faces with a four investigation and a wild card face that can that can be used for any face of your choice. The yellow die replaces the terror face with a four investigation face. The addition of one or both dice can really help in completing the tasks. Another destination for you to move is the museum entrance. There are three different actions to choose from. This one here is receive first aid which allows you to heal one lost sanity or stamina for free. You can also spend trophies to heal more than one, but you can only choose one of the options per turn. This action is search the lost and found. Roll one green die and depending on what you roll, you can gain helpful tokens like spells, common items, or clues. Be careful though, because if you roll an investigation face like this one, it will cost you one sanity or stamina. Wow, even the museum's lost and found is scary in this game. The final action you can choose is buy souvenir. This is where you can exchange trophies you have collected to purchase a single item, clue token, spell, or an ally. For 10 trophies, you can even purchase and an elder sign token. Hey, after many turns slogging around in a musty museum, it'd be nice to head on over to the gift shop, buy that last elder sign to seal away Yig, save the world, and then mosey on down to the snack bar for a nice cold root beer. The final phase of a player's turn is the clock phase. The player advances the clock's hand clockwise by three hours. Because the clock begins at midnight and is only advances in three hour increments, the clock hand can only point to three, six, nine, and twelve. When the clock hand moves to twelve, midnight strikes. After the current player's clock phase ends, after a player's turn ends, and the clock has advanced to or passed twelve, midnight strikes, and the players resolve the following steps in this order. First, resolve at midnight effects on all cards currently in play. 
including adventure cards and other world cards. Also, resolve all the next time the clock strikes midnight effects on Mythos cards. Second, draw one new Mythos card and resolve its immediate effect. Return the previous Mythos card face down to the bottom of its deck. Finally, replenish once per day investigator abilities like Vincent Lee like Vincent's regain one stamina ability. Note, at midnight effects do not occur during the first turn of the game. After the player advances the clock, his turn ends and the next player's turn begins. Play continues until the investigators succeed in collecting all the Elder Sign tokens we need to seal away the Ancient One and immediately win the game. Or the Doom Track is filled up and the Ancient One awakens which immediately triggers the final battle. When battling the Ancient One after awakening it, the players take turns resolving the following two phases in this order. First, the attack phase. The players roll dice in an effort to complete the Ancient One's battle task as many times as possible on their turn. Second, the clock phase. The player advances the clock three hours as usual. Each time midnight strikes, the players resolve the Ancient One's attack. Yig's battle task is shown right here. To attack Yig, the players roll dice to complete his battle task. If the player's roll satisfies the battle task requirements, the investigator has successfully attacked him. The player places the required task dice on the task and removes one doom token from the doom track and rolls his remaining dice to attempt to completing the battle task again. If the player cannot complete the Ancient One's battle task, he must discard one die and re-roll the remaining dice. After the players discard his final die, he proceeds to the clock phase. While battling the Ancient One, players advance the clock as normal. However, instead of drawing a Mythos card when the clock strikes midnight, players resolve the Ancient One's attack ability shown right here on its, on its card. If a player's investigator is devoured during the battle, add one Doom token to the Doom track. For the rest of the game, that player only resolves the clock phase of his turn. The game ends immediately and the players win if they defeat the Ancient One in battle by resolving the final Doom token by removing the final Doom token on the Doom track. And that's all you need to know to play Elder Sign. One of the great features of Elder Sign is its replayability. But if you want to explore the universe of Elder Sign even further, we got expansions. And more expansions. And even more expansions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be on the lookout for our upcoming playthrough video of Elder Sign. If you have any questions regarding this game, please put them in the comments below. And thank you for watching Gamers Genie.